What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy M3 Ferd here with another BMW vlog for the E36, of course. Um, I know it's been like about a month since I made a video. I had took a step back from the car. Um, I went away. I was just enjoying life for a little bit. Uh, the car was getting me frustrated for a bit. So, you know, I just had to chill my birthday pass. I went to Antigua. It was great. But um, today it's Halloween and it's like 80 degrees, which is extremely rare. I don't know the last time it was an 80, de 80 degree weather Halloween, but we have one today. And this, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and work on uh, my differential. So as you can see, I'm gonna have to change these bushings. I'm gonna change all these bolts. I'm gonna change this. And I'm gonna paint it up, make it look, look real, real better. So some of y'all are probably wondering why I'm upgrading the diff. The reason I'm upgrading the diff is because my E36 is originally a 320AI automatic. It was in, it was in stick shift from factory. So this is a complete swap I did. I had got the motor, the transmission, uh, drive shaft, I got M3 brakes, and I got the diff, the diff which I never installed. So even after I swapped in the motor and the transmission, the car was running for a bit, it was still using a 328 non-LSD diff. This diff is LSD. So actually gonna have to swap the flanges from my uh, 328 diff onto this M3 diff because I'm not using M3 axles and the shafts on the M3 diff wouldn't work. They're not compatible with the 328 I axles. So I'm gonna take the flanges off, but that's, that's later down the line. For now, I'm gonna just probably just take them off, block it off with something, clean it up, paint it, and let it sit for a bit. And then I'm probably take the bushings out. Or maybe I should take out the bushings first before I paint it. Hmm. I have this screwdriver here and it kind of broke at the end a while back. So what I would do is I would just take it, like put it in between, as you can see, put it in between there and just use a hammer or mallet, whatever, and just like knock it in. And then just like dig out the, uh, the rubber. So I just wanted to show you this before it actually comes out because I made some progress with it or whatever the case is. I'm gonna clean this up after I get it out make sure in there is smooth and stuff like that. But yeah, it took about 45 minutes to do just one. Probably gonna take me another 45 minutes to do the other one. I'm not gonna record that because you guys are just gonna be bored. Instead, basically what the goal is, um, we're working on is diff, of course, is to change the bushings, which I have right here from Condor. And it's funny that I'm actually gonna use these right now because I bought these probably like 2018 2017 these are the two bushings that go right here well one goes there another one goes another one obviously and then i also ordered the bigger bolts and the other bushing this is the bushing that's on the car um so i'm gonna remove that on the car then i would have to tap the differential i wish i could show you but it's on the other half oh so basically you see this hole right here I have to tap that and make it bigger for this bolt right here because this is a bigger diff, diff bolt because the original diff bolt tends to snap when you're going faster or whatever the case is and since this is a turbo build i'm gonna be going faster i'm gonna upgrade that bolt and then alongside with that since i'm gonna be working on the diff i'm gonna drop the whole rear subframe and then i have my uh subframe bushings that I'm gonna install. Those are also from Condor. I literally ordered all this stuff like years ago and I just never got around to like completing the full complete swap because I never got to the differential part. And then I have one more thing that I have to, oh, those are upstairs. I have a bunch of reinforcement kits to reinforce the trailing arms, reinforce everything underneath there. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know what that is. Then I even have the bushings for those as well. So basically when I'm done, the whole rear end of this car is gonna have new bushings, gonna have new bolts, um, and brand new diff. 
you see what I mean? Oh. So basically, I just hammer it down. And then when it gets deep enough, usually from the other side, I kind of just dig the rubber out of it. So I was finally able to get the freaking middle piece out. Oh my God. If you're gonna do this job, I recommend burning these out. I recommend getting the proper bushing removal tool to remove them. So since I got the middle part out, which is right here, it should be simple to get the rest of the bushing out um, all I'm going to do is continue doing like I was doing with the rubber and just put it on the edge and just like tap it a little bit just to bend the bushing and then that, hopefully that should come out after that. And I already started that already so it shouldn't be much to like tap this out. It actually came out pretty easier, way easier. There it goes right there. So as you can see, what I did was I just took like um, the flathead. And I kind of just tapped it at the top. When it broke in half, I kind of bent it and then it was easy to come out after that. As you can see from inside, I was really chiseling at this thing with the, uh, with the flathead. It's nice and clean in there. Um, I do got some little marks right there from me chiseling at it with the uh, flathead. I'm gonna sand that down, make sure it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna start working on this, but I'm not gonna record it because it's gonna be extremely time consuming. So next time I see this, this is gonna be out and you're gonna see it in five, four, three, two, bow. So this bushing, which is right here, I guess this one was a little bit more worn out then the other one because that one probably took me like 20 minutes to get out came out real real smooth and easy so i just took those off for now because i actually want to fully clean it and i put some bags inside the hole so nothing would go in there in other cases and um for those people watching if this is like your first time working on a diff like mine this is my first time working anything you guys see me doing in a video to my car, it's my first time doing it. And working with the diff, um, just to let you guys know, two, four, six, all 16s. These two are 17s, these are eights. I can't remove this plate at the moment because I don't have an eight. I'm gonna have to borrow one from like, from my friend, or um, probably just, I'll probably just go buy one right now actually and then remove it. And then I'm gonna um, clean that up. I ordered new hardware for it, the hardware looks great. Um, it's coming from Germany. I'm just waiting for it to get here. I ordered new seals for the flanges. Um, well, not for the flanges, for inside the fucking diff. Whatever that part is called. I can't think right now. I right, up to the last bolt. Life is much easier when you have electric tools instead of hand tools. But I'm gonna get me some electric tools soon. Last bolt. Oh, let's see. Woo, that came off real easy. Ah, yeah, boy. Let me show y'all. Oh, so cover, you got inside there. This was leaking when I bought it a while back. So the fluid is definitely low. I'm probably gonna empty that shit out. Ah, we got progress, guys. Yeah. So guys, I wanted to, I actually wasn't gonna record this part because I'm just taking off the gasket and uh cleaning off the underside of the uh diff cover. But this gasket, look at this. It's just like chipping off, bro.
they actually have the proper tools to do this. Um, I wouldn't tell you to do it with a flat head, especially if it's your first time. Um, but if it's your first time, you probably don't have the correct tools. So just improvise as much as you can and try not to scrape it up. And if you do scrape it up, try to clean it off. That's what I'm going to have to do next. And I don't have that tool. I'm going to have to go check Fabe. And I'm going to have to have him clean this up a little bit better than what I did. Ugh. I, mean, I got most of it off, but there's some that's real stuck on here I can't get off. What the hell? Ugh. So I decided to drain it, and because I have the bare minimum amount of tools and things here, I'm going to do it like this. Sometimes you got to improvise. Ugh. Barely any fluid in there. It's a good thing I opened this up, checked it. But I recommend if you get a new diff or you buy a diff that's used, just buy a different journal. You should do this stuff. This is something I just learned to do on my own. So yeah, it's not that hard. As long as you got like a brain that works. You could find things to improvise, especially if you don't have the tools. You figure it out, if, especially if you're, like, motivated to really get this done. I'm motivated to get my car running. I really want to get it done. So this is stuff I got to do, especially when I don't have no tools. I mean, I, I've been buying tools piece by piece, but the bigger ones I need are more expensive. And I could actually just buy car parts that I need right, right now and just ask for, for his tools. <laughs> Y'all ever seen somebody balance a diff on a jack stand? <sighs> This actually works out perfect because I could really look inside and I could spray it out with uh, some, um, what was it called? I can't even think at the moment. But I could clean it out. Y'all seen that leaf just now? Have another bottle. Oh. All right, guys, I'm an idiot. <clears throat> I'm an idiot because I just went to Arch Auto Parts and I bought some sandpaper and I bought that 16 that I didn't have and I could completely sand this so. I started doing that and it looks better than before, way better. So Fabe, if you've seen that, disregard that comment. I don't need your help, I got this myself. Ugh. So yeah, you use sandpaper, just sand it down. Get that old. I'm gonna put this bed on, put it on the floor. Pretty clean for using my freaking hand on my wrist hurts like if I was doing pull-ups but yeah I also came and I sanded off this part of the diff because you know it still had stains and marks from that plastic uh, gasket so it's looking real better now I'm gonna go get some more uh, brake cleaner and spray this one more time and get all this gunk from out that fell in there when I was sanding it as I just literally finished uh, sanding off the diff cover and the diff itself, um, well, not the body of the diff, or where the gasket's supposed to be, um, my seals just came from Beamer World. Look at that. A little Beamer World in there. They're gummies. I love these shits. I'm actually going to eat these just now. Got a 
Got some more stickers. I got a newer sticker. I ain't never had this sticker. I got those other ones. I never had this one. Thank you for choosing Beamer World. How do we do? Y'all did great. I ordered this two days ago. And it's here now as I'm working on my diff. I love it. And here go the two rear axle shaft seals. Wow, I get to install these today. So basically, it comes with the seal and the snap ring that goes inside the diff. Let's start doing that. All right, guys, to remove this, you gotta remove these six bolts. These are 13. Once you remove them, you see the seal and the pin inside that you gotta remove with a pick. I decided to do it on the floor because as you can see, the table I have over there, I don't think it's gonna be sturdy enough for this heavy ass diff. And I'm not gonna balance it on the jack, so I'm gonna do it on the floor. I can have a lot more leverage. Just crack it real easy. This one's a little tough, but. Yes, I'm sitting on the floor right now. Uh, it was much easier to work on a diff that way. Um, I was able to get out the two snap rings. If I could pick it up with these damn gloves, I can't. Uh, I was able to get these out. Um, Sun in my hair. Basically, what you do is you come inside here and you would see the snap ring. It doesn't really fit snug in the circle. So you could put your finger in there and hold it down and part of it would like stick out. And what I did was I just used like a flat screwdriver to like go around the ring and then popped out. Both of them popped out, went flying all over the garage. So uh, after I did that, so remove the six bolts, remove the snap ring. And then I took my little bar right here and I put it right here and I took Big, big Bertha, where's she at? Well, that big ass hammer I be using, I took that and I put it here and I just tapped it. It came loose. I did that to both sides and this should come out real easy now. Hopefully, where's my other glove? Oh, shit. You know, go all the way around and make sure it comes out. Perfectly. All right, let's see. Nope, still not enough. Can't. Ugh. <sighs> Can't get it out. Let's try this again. Let's take five. All right, we back from that take five. You know what's so weird? I'm still struggling on the right one. As I'm struggling on the right one, the left one comes out, no problem. You cannot make this up. Oh my God. So, oh uh, man, I have to do that though. I don't know, that, that right one didn't want to come out just now for some reason. I literally had to knock like the right side and go knock back to the left side, go back to the right, back and forth. I tried to do it one time, but it wouldn't come out. Uh, so, oh, this thing is greasy as shit. Good thing we got gloves. But there goes the seal right there that we're going to change. And apparently the seal is supposed to sit exactly where the original seal is. Because if the seal is too deep, it could block the fluid from flowing in the diff. And you don't want that to happen, especially while you're driving. So, um, we're going to knock that out. I'm going to knock that out. See if I can find something to knock it out and replace it put it back together and then we're gonna have new seals and a new um pin the new snap ring installed in the diff 
put it back together. The old seals are now out. I just used a hammer and a uh, flathead, but I didn't use a flathead. I didn't use it going left to right because it probably would have punctured a hole. So I did it up and down, which is still left and right, depending on how you look at it, but up and down. So I could just like push it down the hole. Now I'm gonna install the new seals and yeah, you can actually kind of see the line where the seal stopped. Some people like to mark it. I didn't mark it. Instead, I just took a picture. But it seems like I don't necessarily have to because you can kind of see where that seal stops. The first seal is in. I'm working on the second one. Um, I took my time when I did because I don't want to damage this because I just got it. And... You know, like I said, you have to put this back exactly how it was. So the seal, that hole right there, you cannot block that hole. So uh, when I looked at it originally, it was just like that, like half of a full moon, half of a full circle, if that's what you want to call it. So you can say that's about the same. So, yeah, let's be careful when you do it, because a few times I went too deep, had to had to softly push this back out a little bit and adjust it. So, you know, it's a back and forth thing. So I'm gonna start working on this one. My people, uh, I got the new seals in. Old seals are out, new seals are in. And as you can see that hole right there, you can see it a little bit if you look right there. It's not fully covered, but it's like halfway covered, which is how it looked when I took it out. Um, I actually wasn't planning on doing all this to the diff, but I did anyway. And this is my first time doing this like in life ever. So I'm actually real proud of myself for doing this with the most basic tools ever, a screwdriver, freaking uh, mallet, not even a mallet, a freaking damn near sledgehammer and a regular, what, regular hand tools. So I'm actually proud of myself for getting this done. Um, the diff is right here. I'm gonna leave it like this because I do wanna paint this over. And now that we're deeper inside, I can like really clean it. Need some brake cleaner, clean that out in there. And then after that, I'm gonna paint it, uh, put it back together. And then I still have to wait for my new bolts and hardware to come. That's coming from Germany. Um, through DHL. Uh, DHL could take a little while, probably take like four or five days. But then I'm gonna connect everything once that is done and then I'm gonna leave it and have it ready to get installed into the E36. All right, but before we actually install it, I have to drop my whole diff because we're gonna reinforce that entire, self, that entire subframe. Sorry about that. Uh, big project, a lot of work coming up to do and it's about time I start doing it, man. But you know, it's your boy, m 3 Ferd. Uh, I actually wanted to make this one one video where I like take apart the diff, paint and do everything one time, but I'm clearly not gonna be able to do that. So this is part one. This is just to this is just how you disassemble the uh your differential. So and if I could do it, anybody could do it. If you got electric tools, that's even better. It took me about two hours fully to disassemble and put in the new seals. And I mean that's not bad. But it's your boy M3Ferd. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe. Look out for part two 
where I paint over my diff. I'm gonna paint over the cover, paint over the actual diff body itself, the case, I guess you wanna call it. And um, yeah, hit that subscribe, man. I hope y'all enjoyed it.